IP addresses. They're pure magic. They make the internet work. That's why pretty much everything in my house has an IP address. My phone, watch, light bulbs, oven, car, my kids, my toilet. Well, not yet. I really don't like touching the toilet like this. <laughs> but what is an IP address and what makes them magic? Let's talk about that. In fact, this is the first episode in a series I'm calling you suck at subnetting. Because we all kind of suck at subnetting just a little bit, right? And in this series, we're going to start with, hey, what the junk is an IP address, which we're addressing today. Ha, <laughs> addressing. And by the end, you'll have Master Chief, Ninja, subnetting skills, whatever you want to call it. You're going to be good at subnetting. That's what I'm trying to get across. And in case you don't know, knowing IP addressing and subnetting is like a required skill for everything in IT, like every single job. Networking, ethical hacking, security, cloud. It all involves an IP address and it all involves... <clears throat> delicious subnetting. This video is also part of my CCNA series sponsored by Boson Software. If you want to get your CCNA or your CCMP, two of the best IT certifications in the world, Boson is what you want to use. From courseware to labs to practice exams, they have you covered. They'll get you prepped and ready. I personally used Boson to pass my T-shirt exam, which is a very, very hard Cisco networking exam, and Boson was amazing. And not to mention, they have a great amount of content on subnetting. So as you're watching this video and this series and you want to get extra practice, dude, check out Boson. And it's not just CCNA and CCMP. They have Security Plus, they've got CEH, all kinds of stuff. They have the best, like, I'm not kidding, the best practice exams in the industry. So if you're like, hey, I'm not sure if I'm gonna pass Security Plus, they'll tell you. Try their practice exam and th they'll tell you. <laughs> Anyways, IP or internet protocol addresses. They're kind of like phone numbers that we assign to all of our devices. So when my toilet wants to send a message to my Apple Watch letting him know how I'm doing, he totally can because they have a way to communicate with each other. They have a phone number. Well, kind of. We use phone numbers to text each other, but devices don't. They use IP addresses. And they look a little different, for sure. And we'll talk about how weird they work. But just know that without an IP address, they can't talk. So that's why we give them one. It opens up communication. Not to mention, it gives your devices the ability to connect to the internet. Because don't you want everything to be able to connect to your toilet? Yeah. So now that we know that if a device wants to talk to any other device, it needs an IP address, that means that the device you're watching me on right now, it has an IP address. FBI, open up! because it's talking to YouTube and YouTube's talking back to it. Let's go find your IP address. Whatever you have, we can find it. On Windows, we're gonna launch a thing called CMD or Command Prompt. Go and search for that and open it. On Mac and Linux, it's gonna be a thing called Terminal. Launch that. And for your phone or any other device, I'll show you here in a second. Here in Windows, one command. Type in IP config, all one word, just like that, and hit enter. On Mac and Linux, type in IF config, all one word, hit enter. On your phone, go into your settings, jump into your Wi-Fi info, dive, dive deeper into that interface, and you will see, hey, there's, there's an IP address. address. And looking back at Windows, here is the IP address. You'll know it because it'll say IPv4 address on the side over here. Don't let the V4 confuse you, ignore it for now. Now let's talk about the sucker, the IP address. He looks kind of weird, kind of dorky, technical. He's a mess of numbers separated by dots, three dots. So that's already strange by itself, but then we have this guy and then this guy. What are they doing? Well, they are basically your IP address's best friends. We'll talk more about them here in a bit. But this guy right here is Mr. Subnet Mask. At least that's what he's called in Windows over here. On Mac or Linux, you might see Net Mask. Same thing. And then this gal right here is Miss Default Gateway. She also goes by Default Router or just Router for short. But enough about them. Let's talk about the star of the show, the one we care about, the IP address. Now let's first cover how in the world did he even get here? How did your device get this number? Who gave it to him? Is it safe? Who gave this to you, device? Actually, that's a legit question. Sometimes you can get a bad IP address. Different video for another time. So how did your device get this IP address? Did it just fall out of the sky? Yeah, kind of, if you're using Wi-Fi. You see, in your homes and in your businesses, we have this thing called a router. It may look familiar. It might be hiding in your closet underneath that sweater you got for Christmas, which by the way, rescue it. Get that sweater off of him, he has to breathe. It gets hot in there. The router is the Oprah of your IP addresses. What? Every time a device connects to your network, she says, here, here's an IP address, here's an IP address for you, and for you, and for you, everyone gets an IP address. Now this dark and mysterious magic known as DHCP is why this works. If you wanna learn more about that, we'll talk about that later. But essentially, Oprah gives your devices IP addresses. That's what I want your takeaway to be, write that down. Okay, now looking back at the IP address, let me ask you a question. How is it that I know that your IP address starts with 192.168? Dot one. Like most of you, that is your IP address, right? Creepy. Especially since each of these numbers can be any number between 0 and 255. So your IP address could be 10.3.2.1, or it could even be 1.2.3.4. So why is it that most of your IP addresses start with 192.168.1? Well, there's a lot of reasons actually that I'm not going to go into because it does get pretty complicated, but the short 
and easy answer is that it's Oprah. Oprah decided that that's what your IP address should be. Should start with, it always comes back to Oprah. And the way that Oprah tells us that each IP address in your network, in your house, is gonna start with 192.168.1 is through Mr. Subnet Mask. I told you he'd come into play here in a bit. Here he is. He looks even weirder than the IP address. And honestly, he's a pretty complex dude. We're gonna spend a lot of time getting to know this guy in this series. But real quick, can I show you a hack that's gonna save you like a billion hours? Now notice that Mr. Subnet Mask does look pretty similar to the IP address. He's got four sets of numbers and three dots. And if you assume that the first number in the IP address matches up to the first number in the Subnet Mask, you'd be exactly right. In fact, they all match up. Two to two, three to three, four to four. Now here comes the hack. When you see a 255 in an octet, which by the way, each of these sections separated by a dot, we call them octets. We will dive deeper into why we call them that. And yeah, it's, it's gonna get a lot more nerdy and so much more fun. I can't tell you more. Just know they're called octets for now, just calm down. So anyways, back to the hack. If that number is a 255, then we know that the corresponding number or the corresponding octet will always stay the same. Within your network, that is. So looking at our subnet mask here, we know the first three octets, or the first three numbers, are 255, which tells us that the first three numbers in our IP address, 192, 168, and 1, will always stay the same in our network. We can confidently say that every single device in your network, at your house or your business, if they look like this, they're going to start with 192.168.1. And that brings us to the last number over here, the zero. What's this guy doing? This zero is telling us that, hey, this last number, it can be whatever you want, whatever your heart's desire, as long as it's between zero and 255, but still, whatever you want, you can use them all. So to sum it up, when you see a 255, that number's locked in. These numbers will never change, but the zero tells us the final number totally will, based on what device it's assigned to. So if you'll allow me to get a bit nerdier and go a bit deeper, in the networking world, we refer to these numbers right here as the network portion of the IP address. And then on this side, the side that'll change based on what device it's assigned to, we call that the host portion. Because in networking and IT in general, when we have devices on a network, your phone, your watch, your toilet, we call those hosts. Your toilet is a host and it has an IP address. Now what I just explained, Put that in your pocket. Don't let nobody hack it. This will become very, very important later. But now let me ask you a question. Why is it important that we have to know the network portion of the IP address? Why do we have to know that the IP addresses in our network start with 192.168.1? Analogy time. We can also think about an IP address like the address of our house, like, you know, the place you live. And tell you what, why don't you comment below your home address? No, I'm totally kidding. Don't do that. Are you crazy? Don't do that. But anyways, you live in a house and that house most of the time, <laughs> I think always, is going to be on a street, right? Now let's say your street that you live on is Privet Drive. If you know where that's from, comment below. And because you're probably not the only house on Privet Drive, you can't just say, hey, send me a package on Privet Drive. I live on Privet Drive. Oh, houses need windows. I knew it looked kind of weird. Hold on, let me draw some windows. So anyways, we'll assign a unique house number to you. So you might live at four Privet Drive and your buddy might live at five and then six and then, Seven, eight, nine, you got it, right? So if I were to send you some Network Chuck coffee, it would go to four Privet Drive. So I sent you some coffee and it was so stinking dang delicious that you wanted to bring some over to your friend, your buddy Bernard over at six Privet Drive. There's Bernard. Now hang tight, here's where the analogy comes into play with IP addresses. So would you call UPS and say, hey, I have some coffee I wanna give Bernard, come pick it up and take it to Bernard? No, no, why would you do that? Bernard lives on your same street. So as you're preparing to send Bernard some coffee, you would go, hey, Bernard lives on Privet Drive. Therefore, I can just walk outside and hand it to him. Because we're so stinking close, we're in the same street, we're in the same neighborhood. So if you're tracking with me here, <laughs> this analogy feels weird. I don't know why, is it me? It's probably me. If you're tracking with me, the network portion of our IP address, the thing that stays the same, is akin to Privet Drive. And the host portion, the thing that does change, is the house address, the house number, four or it could be five, or it could be six, based on who you're sending it to. With our devices in our network, it's the same thing. If you wanna share a picture from your phone to your computer, your phone will look at the IP address of the computer and go, oh, hey, yo, we're on the same network. 192.168.1, he's in my neighborhood. I can just walk over and give it to him. But now, let's say that the coffee's really, really, really good, and Bernard wants to send it to his buddy, Dr. Strange over here on Bleecker Street. So Bernard looks at Dr. Strange's address and he goes, okay, hey, Bleecker, I can't say it, Bleecker Street. I don't live on Bleecker Street. I can't just walk outside and hand coffee to Dr. Strange. 
In fact, he lives all the way in New York. He's far away, or maybe another dimension. I don't know what, what's going on. So Bernard, realizing he needs help, will just call UPS and have them come pick it up and take coffee to Doctor Strange. And in the same way, my laptop may want to go out to Netflix.com, which has this IP address and it's in a completely different network. And my laptop will go, dude, he's not in my network. He's not in my same neighborhood. I need some help. I need to call UPS. Except in this scenario, it's not UPS, it's Miss Default Gateway or Miss Default Router, AKA Router. Your computer or any device on your network will look at its IP address and then look at Mr. Subnet Mask and go, huh, my network is 192.168.1, Netflix is not in my neighborhood, I need help, please help me, Miss Default Gateway. Miss Default Gateway, she knows everything. She knows exactly how to get to Netflix and she'll take it from there. Now, fun fact, Miss Default Gateway, she's actually your router. She's Oprah. I know, mind blown the entire time. Never saw it coming. What a plot twist. That's some Scooby-Doo stuff right there. So to sum that part up, whenever any device in your network, whether it's your home network or a network at a business or pretty much any network in the world, when it wants to talk to something not on its same street, when it wants to talk to something outside its network, it has to talk to its router, its default gateway to get out. It has to talk to Oprah, write that down. Now real quick, I got a challenge question for you. Let's see if you've been paying attention. Looking at my network here, which might be the exact same as your network, I told you, this is one of the most common networks in the world. Or did I tell you that? By the way, this is one of the most common networks in the world, my kid just screamed, for private networks. Looking at this IP address and looking at this subnet mask, how many possible IP addresses are available to assign to devices in your network? And by the way, if you could figure this out, that pretty much covers the majority of networks. I'm not sure what the statistics are, but I think like Network Chuck's opinion, like 95% of all networks kind of look like this. So go ahead and comment your answer below, just raw without me telling you. I'm curious what it will be, but let's walk through it real quick. And you're probably wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Looking at this, we know. 255 in the subnet mask means this number locked in stays the same. So does this one and this one because of the 255. But over here is zero. We know this last number can be anything as long as it's between zero and 200 and 55, which would give us a total, including zero, of 256 IP addresses. Party, we got a ton, but you're wrong. <laughs> it's not 256. Because like everything in life, there's a catch. There's always tax, there's always extra fees. You always have to look for that. Life lesson. Anyways, here we go. Where's the catch? Where's the extra fees in our networking? Well, first of all, right off the bat, there are always two IP addresses that are reserved that you cannot touch, you cannot use in any given network. First, it's the first IP address in your network. So in this one, it would be 192.168.1.0. That one's untouchable. It's referred to as the network address. He's a leader, he's the first, the firstborn son, you can't touch him. The second IP address you can't touch is the last IP address in your network. In this particular network we're talking about, it'd be 192.168.1.255. This guy, dude, he talks way too much. He's a chatty Cathy. We call him the broadcast address because when you tell him something, he tells it to everyone. Can't keep a secret. And that's legit what he does. When you send anything to a broadcast address, the last IP address in a network, it literally will broadcast it out to everybody. It's like, hey, everyone, guess what? <laughs> so don't tell him anything unless you want everyone to know. So that's two you can't touch and then one you really have to think about. And it might just be Miss Default Gateway. There has to be a router. Oh, well, I just drove over that. There has to be a router in your network and that will take up one IP address. So we're now three IP addresses shy of 256, which gives us a total of 253 usable IP addresses. If you got that right, you're on your way to becoming a subnetting master. Congrats. If you didn't, that's totally okay. This is so brand new and can be very complex, but don't worry, we're gonna hold hands. No, I'm gonna hold your hand and walk you through this. So, <laughs> little coffee break. We covered so much in this video. Oh, that's cold coffee. Yeah, that's how long we, we, I've been here recording. It's cold coffee. Like the video, because I just sipped some cold coffee. And I, I, uh, I need to go heat it up. But anyways, let's take a look <laughs> at what we've covered so far in this video. We talked about IP addresses, right? <laughs> we talked about that everything in your, your network, in your house, that wants to connect and talk either to other devices in your network or to devices outside the network on the internet, Netflix, or just your toilet having a conversation with your watch. If any of that needs to happen, you have to have an IP address, basically the cell phone number of your devices. Unless you actually have a cell phone, then it also has a cell phone number and an IP address. 
Very confusing, I know. Chuck, get better at analogies. You also get a chance to meet Mr. Subnet Mask, a very complex and mysterious dude you'll get to know a lot better in the coming videos. He also goes by NetMask and he tells us and our devices what our IP addresses in our entire network start with. He tells us what street we live on. In this network right here, the street we live on is 192.168.1 because of our little hack, the 255s. And then finally, you met Miss Default Gateway, AKA Default Router or Router or Oprah. She does it all. Not only does she give all your devices in your network an IP address, but she can help you get outside your network if you want to go visit Netflix or NetworkChuck.com or even better, NetworkChuck.coffee. So anyways, that's IP addresses. And I just realized I spelled IP address wrong. Let's add the extra D. Cool, we're good. And let me tell you, yes, we are just scratching the surface. We're going to get much more complex on how IP addresses work in the world. And in your home network and in your business. And you'll learn that killer skill, that crazy awesome skill that you pretty much need for anything in IT, subnetting. Because let me tell you, this example we've been working with here is very, very simple, but don't you worry. You're gonna learn the skills to make this crazy complex and fun. And by the end, you will be a master chief ninja subnetting master. Did I say master twice? That's fine. This video is sponsored by Manscaped. Hold on, <laughs> let me make sure there's no one listening. I'll be right quick. We should be good. No little ears out there. All right, listen up, men. This ad is for you, because I got some new toys. So as you may recall from my last ad or maybe other ads, Manscaped is all about stuff below the waist for men. Uh, yeah, it's trusted by over 4 million men to make sure everything downstairs is looking good, smelling good, good. Now Manscaped is going um, beyond the groin <laughs> with the brand new lineup of products. They're calling this the Manscaped Ultra Premium Collection. All those really big words. This is an all-in-one skincare kit. So they got stuff for your skin and for your hair. It smells pretty good. Got some shampoo and body wash. And this is the, the newest formulations by Manscaped for your, uh, your butt, balls, and body all-in-one package. The reason these ads is so awkward. All right, so they, they have steps. What do you say we give it a try? Let's do this. Step one, I'll hop in the shower and use the two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, which cleanses and nourishes with a luxurious lather. It's got coconut water, green tea, aloe, turmeric, and sage. Feels nice. Step two, we got the body wash. The body wash is a premium daily shower gel that's infused with aloe vera and sea salt. It's the perfect balance of <laughs> tough cleaning and soothing hydration. Step three, we're gonna rinse and towel off and then apply something I've never seen before, Manscaped Hydrating Body Spray. It's a spray on moisturizer for everyday hydration, that's what it says. Got a 360 degree delivery spray system. And no, we're not done yet. Step four, we got deodorant. It smells pretty dang good. This stuff is stain free, aluminum free, dries clear, it smells freaking fantastic. And now time for step five, Manscaped Lip Balm. You've probably never seen my lips, they're there, but my wife says I don't have any. It's got vitamin E, peppermint, and eucalyptus to help soothe, hydrate, and seal in moisture. All this stuff is cruelty-free, paraben-free, and it's vegan. That was five steps in five minutes, although I like to take my showers a bit longer, so 10 minutes. Oh, you can also opt in for the Manscaped uh, Peak Hygiene Plan, so you can make sure you never run out of stuff, because you know, I don't like going to the store. Just pick a plan and that stuff gets delivered to you without you thinking about it. So you can focus on studying and IP addressing and subnetting. Go to manscaped.com and use promo code NETWORKCHUCK and get 20% off your order. Plus receive free international shipping. And yeah, that was 20% off with free international shipping with promo code NETWORKCHUCK at manscaped.com or just click the link below. Thank you, Manscaped, for covering me head to toe. And seriously, thanks for sponsoring the video. You guys should get this stuff because you stink. Anyways, bye. That's all I have. <laughs> Explaining IP addressing is not easy. So let's make sure you hack the YouTube algorithm today. Hit that like button, subscribe, notification bell, comment. We gotta hack YouTube today. Ethically, of course. And yeah, that's really all I got. Whew. I'll catch you guys next time.